The world's largest battery company just announced they're quitting the race. Not the race for better batteries, the race for expensive batteries. CATL, the company that produces more lithium batteries than anyone else on the planet, just did something almost impossible to believe. They reinvented table salt to create batteries that last 10,000 cycles, work at minus 40 degrees Celsius, and cost a fraction of current prices. But here's the twist that nobody's talking about. They're being mysteriously quiet about exactly how they pulled this off. No detailed technical papers, no manufacturing secrets revealed. Just bold claims and a timeline that suggests mass production starts in December 2025. So is this real? Or are we looking at the biggest battery hype cycle since solid state promises began a decade ago? Let me start by addressing the elephant in the room. You've probably seen headlines claiming Cattle's new sodium batteries cost $10 per kilowatt hour. That would be absolutely revolutionary if true. The entire industry has been desperately trying to hit $100 per kilowatt hour for over a decade. But here's what our research revealed. There is no official confirmation of $10 per kilowatt hour from any primary source. Not from KATL's official announcements. Not from Reuters not from Bloomberg. That number appears to be viral speculation that's taken on a life of its own. The reality is already shocking enough. Current battery pack prices in China have crashed to around $65 to $70 per kilowatt hour for large-scale energy storage systems. Individual LFP cells are trading at $53 to $56 per kilowatt hour in Chinese markets. That's still more than five times higher than the mythical $10 figure, but it represents a price collapse that's reshaping the entire energy landscape. To put this in perspective, back in 2008, lithium batteries cost $1,415 per kilowatt hour. We've spent 16 years clawing our way down to an average of $115 per kilowatt hour globally in 2024. China has blown past that target and is approaching prices that make batteries almost disposable. So how did Chinese manufacturers achieve these dramatic cost reductions? It's not magic. It's a perfect storm of five key factors. First, overcapacity and a brutal price war. Chinese battery manufacturers built so much production capacity that supply now far exceeds demand. When companies are fighting for survival, profit margins disappear. Recent bidding for energy storage projects in China hit rock bottom at 37 to 50 Chinese yuan per watt hour. That's roughly $51 to $69 per kilowatt hour for complete systems, not just cells. Second, vertical integration on a massive scale. CATL and other Chinese manufacturers control everything from raw material processing to final assembly. They mine the lithium, process the graphite, manufacture the cathodes and anodes, and assemble the final packs. This eliminates middleman markups and reduces supply chain risks. Third, revolutionary packaging technologies. CATL's cell-to-pack architecture, particularly their Keelan 3.0 system, achieves 72% volume utilization. That means less wasted space, fewer components, reduced labor costs, and ultimately cheaper batteries per kilowatt hour of storage. Fourth, chemistry advantages. By focusing heavily on lithium iron phosphate chemistry, Chinese manufacturers avoid expensive materials like nickel and cobalt. LFP batteries use iron and phosphate, materials that are abundant and cheap. Fifth, manufacturing scale and efficiency. These aren't startup companies with experimental production lines. CATL operates mature factories with optimized processes and can retool existing lithium production lines to manufacture sodium batteries using nearly identical equipment. The result? China has essentially turned batteries into a commodity product where the materials cost more than the manufacturing and profit margins combined. This brings us to CATL's boldest bet, sodium ion batteries. Now, sodium has always been the underdog in battery chemistry. While lithium gets all the attention, sodium offers some compelling advantages that become crucial as we scale up energy storage. Let's start with abundance. 
Sodium is literally everywhere. It's the sixth most abundant element on Earth and a major component of seawater. We're never going to run out of sodium the way we might eventually face lithium supply constraints. But abundance doesn't automatically mean cheap batteries. Sodium ion technology has historically suffered from lower energy density, shorter cycle life, and surprisingly high manufacturing costs despite cheap raw materials. KTL claims they've solved these fundamental problems with their new Naxtra battery technology. The specifications they're announcing are genuinely impressive. 175 watt-hours per kilogram energy density, over 10,000 charge cycles, and operation from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees Celsius, while retaining 90% of capacity at extreme temperatures. Let me put those numbers in context. Tesla's current LFP batteries typically last 3,000 to 4,000 charge cycles before dropping below 80% capacity. If Cattle's 10,000 cycle claim proves accurate, we're talking about a battery that could theoretically power a vehicle for millions of miles before significant degradation. The temperature performance is equally remarkable. Current lithium batteries struggle in extreme cold. Ask anyone who's tried to start an electric vehicle in a Canadian winter. Sodium batteries naturally handle temperature extremes better, which opens up entire geographic markets that have been difficult for electric vehicles. CATL says this translates to over 500 kilometers of driving range, which covers the vast majority of daily driving needs. Yes, it's still behind premium nickel-based lithium batteries that hit 250 to 300 watt-hours per kilogram. But it's competitive with the LFP batteries that already power millions of vehicles worldwide. But CATL isn't putting all their eggs in the sodium basket. Their most intriguing technology might be Freevoy, a hybrid battery pack that combines multiple chemistries in a single system. Think of Freevoy as the Swiss Army knife of batteries. It comes in three configurations, classic LFP, high-performance nickel-manganese cobalt, and now sodium ion. Each chemistry brings specific strengths, and Freevoy's power management system intelligently switches between them based on conditions and requirements. Since launching in October 2024, CATL has refined this technology beyond simply connecting two different battery types. They've optimized cell ratios and connections to improve temperature range by 5% and extend electric range by over 10 kilometers. Here's where it gets clever. The system uses sodium as a state of charge benchmark to calibrate the lithium ion battery's charge level. This improves overall system efficiency while addressing each chemistry's weaknesses with the other's strengths. Cold weather performance, switch to sodium. Need maximum range for a road trip? Rely on lithium? City driving in extreme heat? Back to sodium. It's about choosing the right tool for each specific job. The market validation is already happening. 30 different vehicle models from brands including Geely, Sherry, GAC, and Voya are scheduled to launch with Freevoy batteries this year. These aren't concept cars, they're production vehicles hitting showrooms. Now for the critical question, how much of this should we actually believe? CATL has a track record of delivering on their promises, but they also have a marketing department that knows how to generate buzz. Let's separate what's confirmed from what's still speculative. Confirmed, KTL is already producing sodium batteries and has been for several years, though not at this scale. The Freevoy hybrid technology is real and shipping in commercial vehicles. The company commands about 40% of global EV battery installations and works with industry giants from Tesla to Mercedes-Benz. Confirmed. Current battery prices in China have indeed collapsed to levels that seemed impossible just a few years ago. The $65 to $70 per kilowatt hour figures for energy storage systems are backed by multiple industry sources and actual bidding results. Still uncertain, the exact pricing for Naxtra batteries. CATL has been notably tight-lipped about specific costs, which raises questions about whether the economics work as advertised. Still uncertain, the manufacturing timeline. CATL originally promised sodium supply chains by 2023, but didn't achieve this until 2025. 
mass production starting in December 2025 is ambitious. The fundamental challenge remains what Stanford University researchers identified in a January 2025 study. Sodium batteries face a classic catch-22. They need scale to achieve promised costs, but they need low costs to achieve scale. However, CATL has a significant advantage here. Sodium cells use nearly identical production processes to lithium-ion cells, which means they can convert existing manufacturing lines rather than building from scratch. That's crucial for scaling quickly. So what does this actually mean for your next car purchase or home energy setup? If these cost reductions prove sustainable, we're looking at a fundamental shift in transportation economics. Electric vehicles could not only reach price parity with gasoline cars years ahead of schedule, they could become significantly cheaper. Home energy storage could transition from luxury to standard equipment. Installing a battery backup system for your house might cost less than a high-end appliance. Grid-scale storage could explode, making renewable energy more reliable and cost-effective. The timeline matters here. KTL says mass production begins in December 2025, which means the first vehicles with these batteries could reach markets in 2026. Early adopters will likely be commercial fleets and budget-conscious consumers in emerging markets, but the technology should trickle up to premium vehicles within a few years. For consumers in colder climates, sodium's temperature performance could be a game-changer. No more range anxiety during winter months or expensive battery heating systems to maintain performance. But there are legitimate concerns. Sodium batteries still have lower energy density than premium lithium technologies. If you're someone who regularly takes 400-mile road trips, current sodium technology might not meet your needs. However, for the 90% of drivers who never exceed 200 miles per day, the trade-offs could be worth the cost savings. The battery industry is clearly diversifying. Lithium won't disappear overnight, but it might not dominate forever. We're entering an era where different applications will use different chemistries based on specific requirements rather than trying to force one technology to serve every use case. CATL's CEO Robin Zeng has stated that sodium could capture up to half the battery market. Coming from the leader of the world's largest battery company, that's not idle speculation. It's a strategic roadmap. The real test happens this year. Will those 30 announced vehicle models actually ship with Freevoy batteries? Will consumers trust a new battery chemistry? Will the promised cost reductions materialize at scale? One thing seems certain. Competition in the battery space is intensifying, and competition usually means better products at lower prices for consumers. What do you think? Would you buy a sodium-powered electric vehicle if it saved you thousands of dollars? Or do the slightly lower specifications make it a non-starter for your needs? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this analysis helpful, subscribe for more deep dives into emerging technologies that are reshaping our world. And remember, in the rapidly evolving world of energy storage, today's breakthrough is tomorrow's commodity. The question isn't whether batteries will get better and cheaper, it's how fast the transformation will happen.